time out. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I'll see if I still have any cloud around here. <laughs> we wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, actually, it's my deputy. Entire Capitol Police Corps working on those. <laughs> it should be okay. Okay. Maybe the governor will pull up now. So, thank you for being here this morning. I'm Denise Merrill, Secretary of the State of Connecticut. I'm going to start with a little story. At the end of my first term in office as a state legislator, I was chosen for a fellowship program. And at that program, they asked us to write down what role we wanted to be known for when our careers were over. The way they said it was, write your own political epitaph, which was sort of a startling idea at the time. They asked us to seal it in an envelope, put it away, and don't think about it again for at least 10 years. And at the time, I remember other legislators in the room, uh, all of them new, uh, and primarily, I have to say, men, uh, throwing around ideas like U.S. Senator, President of the United States. Well, I kept that envelope in my files for over 10 years, and when I finally opened it, I had pretty much forgotten about it. I had written, I would like to end my career as the Connecticut Secretary of the State. Today, I am announcing that I will not be running for re-election in 2022. It has been the honor of my life to serve three terms as the secretary of this great state. And I'm very proud of what we've accomplished together in my three terms. I came into this office in 2011 with a promise to update and modernize the office with new technology and new ideas. I wanted to make sure that Connecticut's election system reflected our modern world and not the 18th century Connecticut when it was designed. And I wanted to make it easier for businesses to register and do business with the state and to access business filings online. I'm proud to say we've done all this and much more. We made it easier for Connecticut citizens to register to vote by setting up online voter registration, election day registration, automatic voter registration through the DMV and now beyond that. We're now using new tools to help keep the voter rolls more accurate, including sharing information with other states. And of course, the world and the world of election administration has changed dramatically during my time as secretary. Uh, there were many highlights over the years, many storms we endured of all different kinds, but the storm of 2016 was really what changed everything. I was president of the National Association of Secretaries of State in 2016 when the U.S. intelligence community, community uh, speaking with one voice, warned that hostile foreign powers, particularly Russia, were seeking to affect the outcome of our elections right here in Connecticut. Overnight, election administration required a cybersecurity component, so we created the first in the nation state cybersecurity task force incorporating state, local, and federal agencies. Connecticut committed to bolstering our cybersecurity infrastructure, not just at the state level, but also for the registrars and town clerks in every town in the state. Meanwhile, it became clear that hostile foreign powers weren't as concerned with hacking our voting technology as they were with hacking our minds. A well-documented campaign of misinformation was launched designed to erode Americans' trust in their elections, one that continues to this day. And then, on top of everything else, came along a once-in-a-century global pandemic. COVID-19 changed everything. A deadly virus that passed through person-to-person -person contact put tremendous stress on an election system designed for one single day of voting in school cafeterias and town halls throughout the state. My staff and I started meeting in February and working with the registrars, the town clerks, the legislature, the governor, 
we were able to plan, design, and implement a system where every Connecticut voter was able to safely participate in the 2020 elections. And we launched the most comprehensive voter education campaign in state history to make sure that every voter knew exactly how to cast their ballot, even if that method was new to them. Because of these efforts, our election in 2020 was a resounding success. More people voting, more voter turnout, more people registering to vote, and more easily than ever before in the history of the state. But it also exposed the inflexibility of our system. It's clear now there's broad public support for making our system more accessible to the modern voter. I am proud that as I leave office, voters will be choosing to authorize early voting and that allowing universal access to absentee ballots is moving inexorably to its eventual passage. So finally, I'm proud of the steps we've taken to modernize and streamline the office itself. We do more today using fewer resources than we did when we came into office in 2011. Businesses can now do virtually all their interactions online, and we're working with Governor Lamont and other agencies to make a true one-stop experience for starting and growing a business in Connecticut. Our e-regulation system is a national example of good government, bringing regulations process into the 21st century. So I want to make one thing clear, although this may sound like a farewell speech, it's not. While I'm not running again, I am not retiring. There's too much work still to be done, and of course, a year and a half uh, still left in my term. I look forward to working on my twin passions, expanding access to the franchise to every eligible voter, and fighting the insidious spread of misinformation about our elections through civic engagement and civic education. I will be lending my efforts to passing the constitutional amendments that will allow voters to vote by the method of their choice, by absentee ballot without needing an excuse, in person before election day, or at their local polling places in Connecticut, as Connecticut voters have been doing for more than 200 years. And I will be ending my career the way I began it, by promoting civic education. We must commit to educating students and adults alike about how our government works, the safeguards in place to ensure the integrity of our elections, and giving everyone the tools necessary to tell the difference between reliable news and attractive falsehoods. We must rededicate our efforts to include education for citizenship in our school curriculum and helping all citizens engage with their government. Healing our country will take Republicans, Democrats, and unaffiliated voters all working together, and I look forward to playing a part in that process. I also look forward to continuing to encourage more women to get involved in politics, as I have all my career. On average, Women need to be asked seven times before they decide to run for office, and for women of color, it's twice that. Programs like the Women's Campaign School at Yale, which I joined very early on in my career, that encourage women to run for office should be supported and encouraged. We need more women of both parties doing this important work. I just want to note for the record that this year, 2021, marks my 30th year in elective office. This will be the first time I will not be preparing for another election. And believe me, that is a part of it that I won't miss so much. I began in 1991 serving on the Mansfield Board of Education. And all I can say is in the end, I hope I've made a difference. So thank you very much to the citizens of Connecticut who all put me here, and thank you to all of you. Um, and Let's continue on with the work we're already doing. Another year and a half to go, and we'll see what happens next. Thanks very much. Why did so early? I think it was time because I knew that I wasn't going to run again. I had thought this over long and hard. Um, and because it right now feels like the right moment. I mean, everything, uh, I think I'm leaving things in a good place. Uh, we just came off a session that, you know, we passed meaningful legislation. Uh, the office is in very good condition, and uh, we have a tremendous team in place. And also, I wanted to give people who want to run for this office a chance to get their election going and started. I didn't see the point of dragging it on through the summer if I already knew what was going to happen. And that's the way democracy works best, I think. What would you say is your, 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 your biggest 
will be your biggest piece of unfinished business as you move off it? Uh, there are, well, of course, the constitutional amendments need to get passed on the ballots in 2022 and 2024. That's still quite a ways away. But there are uh, many things that are going to happen around elections in particular that will need to be addressed. We're going to need to get new voting tabulators at some point. They're almost 20 years old. Uh, we, we're going to have to look at that long and hard. There's been a lot of contention around the country about what we should be using in the future to uh, vote for elec uh, in elections. Um, and a lot of concern about things like audits, uh, how do we audit the ballots, what kinds of equipment are we using. We're going to have to navigate all that, and it won't be easy, but it has to be done. How hard was this decision to make when voting rights are kind of at the forefront of the national conversation? It did give me pause, but, you know, I think... I like to think these jobs are borrowed jobs. You know, no one should be here forever. Uh, people come in with new ideas. I've been in for three terms, almost it'll be 12 years. Uh, and before that, I served in public office for 17 years in the General Assembly. So I, I, I feel very much like it's also a time that a new generation needs to step up and preserve these things. Uh, you know, I think it's time that another group of people who have different and newer ideas about technology and all kinds of things about elections, uh, you know, needs to come step up. And I'm looking forward to that personally. Oh, I have no specific plans, but I plan to be very active still in the fight for voting rights nationally. Uh, I've been active with organizations across the country, uh, particularly with the National Association of Secretaries of State, but other groups, too, that are fighting to make sure that we preserve our voting rights. You know, here in Connecticut, we have a pretty solid system, and we haven't had the kinds of things happen that are happening in other states, but uh, there's lots of work to be done in those other places. Connecticut is an unusual state in that um, you are deemed the chief elections officer, but yet much of the responsibility and power rests with municipal officials. Uh, are there any suggestions that you care to make at this point <laughs> about changes that, that should be made in that respect? You know, at this point where there's so much concern nationally about how elections are administered, I think it's probably the wrong time to make too many changes. We have to maintain the trust of the public in our elections. And while we have certain problems with it being so local, I mean, every one of the 169 towns has to host an election. And uh, there's a registrar, one from each party, which I think preserves the confidence at the local level that there's still somebody you can talk to there about your elections. And it's from both parties. And I think at this point, you know, while I think eventually we'll probably have to have more regional systems uh, that are more, you know, easier to manage because it is very difficult to get all the information collected at the end of the night, as you know, you know, it's, it's fair, we've had to put in place this election management system, but administratively it's really difficult to manage at a statewide level, all those towns, all those people involved. So, but I don't think now is the time to change that. We've done pretty well with it, you know, in the past I've made some suggestions. Um, people in Connecticut want to keep things the way they are, and as long as they have trust in how it's working, I'm good with it. <laughs> You know, that's a great question. I think it's wide open. I don't, I don't, you know, a lot of people are interested in this. Uh, it's obviously, there's a lot of concern about minority rights across the country. Uh, so maybe it'll be somebody from a minority community. That would be wonderful. I, of course, would love to see another woman <laughs> in my place. Um, you know, but, you know, I think it's a wide open race at this point. Anybody else? Well, thank you very much. It's been a privilege and an honor. So, you would be one of special, right? So, Pelco would have left next term, that's why it's only 17 years ago. Yeah. Okay. He left this term and I came in the municipal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.